Welcome, my friends, my family, my fellow gamers. Your only friend is YouTube Streets. Portal Rock 77. I haven't done these in quite a minute. You know, getting back into the saddle uh, for my vacation. Um, obviously, kept up with my podcast. Um, shout out to the panel members and those who stopped by to rock out with me. I truly appreciate it. Um, but today's uh, topic, let's talk about... The web of lies is 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 finally catching up uh, to the Xbox community um, in terms of performance power and all that stuff, and it and and it was done for no reason. All right. Um, recently, uh, what's really what was the tipping point in this conversation was uh, the performance comparisons of. Hogwarts Legacy, and then more recently, Atomic Heart. Uh, Digital Foundry delayed their technical analysis of Hogwarts Legacy. That was a whole debacle in of itself, but most likely it had probably due to some, uh, you could say, the, you know, the whole uh, issue with Hogwarts Legacy probably has something to do with it, but possibly due to the backlash or whatever happened with digital foundry they ended up doing it anyway and it resulted in um you know hogwarts let's see ha ps5 having better performance for hogwarts legacy over the xbox series x despite having the same settings and you know graphical fidelity and resolution uh frame rate and then most recently atomic heart um well before i say atomic heart many was saying as a damage control was because Hogwarts Legacy was a marketed game paid by Sony, contracts, parity clauses, all this stuff inhibited the performance of Xbox Series X version. But then Atomic Heart came out, which is marketed by Xbox, is day one on Game Pass. It is definitely not a marketed PlayStation game. And once again, performance runs better on the PS5. Uh, this video is not to, to, for me to hype PS5's power or to gloat about PS5 is a more power, better... No, it's not that. Um, if anything, if, if you've been following me along, especially since last gen, I always said that the small differences between consoles is not worth the argument. Because at the end of the day, if you only play on Xbox, you're not going to know how good or bad the PlayStation version of a game is, and vice versa. I even said no one cares that somebody... Well, you know, at the time, you know, the 2080 was the most powerful card and the 30, whatever. But right now it's a 4090, right? How come nobody cares about the 4090 version of these games? Which, you know, PCs with that type of GPU and, and the i7 or i9, whatever, CPUs, they're running the games better than these consoles. But nobody cares about that version. It's because nobody really cares about the most super beast performing one, right? That's not really a thing. As long as the game generally... Looks great, runs well, you know. And what's funny is because Digital Foundry delay the Hogwarts Legacy, that wasn't a topic. It was maybe, well, a good two, three weeks before Digital Foundry actually um, made their analysis. No one talked about, ooh, my version is better. Nobody worried about, no, no one said, because due to a lack of Digital Foundry analysis, you didn't see any gamer out there saying, damn, I don't know which version to buy. Should I get the PS5 version or, or should I get the Xbox version? I, I, I have to absolutely play the best version. I just don't know what to do. Eh, that didn't happen. People bought the version for the platform they wanted to play on and everyone enjoyed it across the board. It wasn't until Digital Foundry finally made the analysis and it broke out the PS5. Now everybody... Is talking trash, which goes to my point when it comes to small difference, nobody really care. But the point of this video is um, that the nonsense and the exaggeration and, and, and the time and energy spent on, on you know, the wonders of full RDNA 2.0 and mesh shaders and VRS, all these topics, almost a lot of gamers were talking about and half of them don't even know what this stuff does. And to be honest, with all these stuff and tools and whatever, who actually said they were actually going to work? They were all really stuff that AMD said. Oh, this is what's going to happen. This is how it's going to change games. AMD was selling a product. 
and hyping specs and hyping components and hyping you know stuff but that doesn't mean it was actually gonna come true but the gaming community fought all along and 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 then enters so we got nonsense and nonsense for years we even had straight out lies i think there was clear 100 percent clout chasing liars that grinnell guy see grinnell whatever saying that he's hearing that playstation is having trouble running 1440p Oh, but 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 to make him sound like a good guy. Oh, but that doesn't mean the console can't get great games. It's that he's just these fanboys, as if you know, fanboys can't handle facts. You know, as if as if it's on the PlayStation community to accept it's a fourteen forty p machine, but you're still gonna get great games, and that's all that should matter. And absolute liar, you know, and it, and and all that compounded, right? Well, not just compounded. One more thing. When you had community that was trying to speak the actual truth, which is now, now they're accepting the truth, right? One of them being, shout out, you know, rest in peace, my good friend uh, Optimus Code. He was a great mentor and, you know, taught me a lot. He was one of the first in the community to actually tell people that the spec sheets, is just it doesn't mean nothing. There is a path to how... Ultimately, a game performs, and you have to consider that path. You have to consider, he said, the tools. You have to consider the poly- compilers. You have to consider the developers and their capabilities and their proficiency. Is the developer more used to how PlayStation does things versus Xbox? Because generally, PlayStation has been, you know, the more, how would you say, uh, the brand that usually dominates the generation. So, there's a lot of developers that have more experience with PlayStation over Xbox because of just the nature of the industry, right? He says you gotta consider that. You also gotta consider is the company, the third party developer or publisher really that concerned about ensuring one version is absolutely better than the other? When they're generally concerned about a well rounded, good game across all platforms so that way everybody can enjoy. He says there was so, there's so much stuff along the way towards the final part of the game and everybody's ignoring that he said people just talked about the specs and then they jumped past all the processes that leads to a game and went straight to the outcome people just went hey this is specs this is the outcome but they didn't talk about the individual blocks you know and you know what what one one thing one example that was being used is um you know you can have a world-class kitchen with world-class ingredients and world-class cuts of meat and all that stuff. And then you get a world-class chef who just has a fire pit, an iron skillet, salt and pepper, and some meat. Who's going to make the better meal? You know? And that's a good point. He says, there's a lot of things that goes in. Time, money, talent. Are these tools that are being promised, do they actually deliver? He says, he says, he was. there was times... The industry promised certain, but then when the developers actually use it, it didn't really pan out what was promised. So there's so much in between, and that was all ignored. And if you try to talk about that, if you try to bring that up, you will label a fanboy or an Xbox hater. God forbid you make logical points. You know, Xbox hater, fanboy, that's the instant mark. And that would instantly dismiss logical conversations. God forbid you say something logical as you know developer talent and being able to access all this stuff that you know nobody received that information like you know what that's a good point you know xbox could have all this stuff but if the developers ain't truly capitalizing it ain't truly understand or mature don't have the right whatever you know so many things you're right it may not result in the best version of these games there's so many things in between nobody wanted to hear that what people wanted to hear was clear-cut xbox domination that's what and that's really all the conversation is you either admit and talk xbox dominates or you're a fanboy you're one of those xbox haters or you want xbox to go away sony pony nothing but you know um insults or whatever there's no room for an actual logical discussion well guess what it's 2023 now they want to have the logical discussion only because they're trying to save face or they trying to look like they knew what I was talking about. No, 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 no. Some of y'all, y'all stupid. And you can now you cannot now have a logical conversation. We tried that two years ago. You didn't want it. 
You want to dive deep into the bullshit, you's going to stay there. You're staying in your bullshit. You don't get to sit at the table of logical conversation. You you had the opportunity to do that. You had the opportunity to, if you didn't know, to at least learn, right, from people. Like I learned from out there's code and other people. I sat down and listened. Y'all didn't want to do that because it didn't meet the end goal. Xbox domination or you're a hater, period. It's even happening today. Shout out to my little brother, Doc Dark. He got fed up. You know, everybody kept feeding him BS after BS about the power or whatever. And he sees more and more not. It's just not true. It's time to admit the truth. And people still trying to rag on him. Even though he is backed by the truth. Because again, some of you dudes, you only care about Xbox Domination. Listen, I'm going to tell you Xbox Fanboy something. Your fake reality is not translating into the real world. So you might as well stop it. You're embarrassing yourselves live on Twitter. It doesn't matter how many tweets you write. It doesn't matter how many people you call pony fanboys. It doesn't matter how many likes you get. People see the sunrise in the east and sets in the west. We see the real world. We don't have to actually rely on Twitter to actually see the damn result. It's not necessary. The words you guys say is is just pointless. It does nothing. You cannot... Change the rotation of the planet. It's not working. The flat earthers have a better chance of convincing the rest of the world that the world is flat than what you guys can do. It's just, it's just ridiculous, right? And now it's coming crashing down. And the the crazy part is, at this point, I don't see the sense in, I know PlayStation guys are still going to do it, you know, anytime a PlayStation version game it's a better version. They're going to keep egging at it because at that point, you're just you're just picking the scab. You know, they're letting you, you know, they're letting you Xbox for them boys. Your wounds heal and they just want to rip it off. But to be honest, in just honest conversation, there is no point in discussing better versions of games. Because at this point, we're in 2023. It's no longer about which version performs better than the other. That, that ship has sailed. You had the first year or two to make that decision, to make that claim. That claim didn't happen. Now we're moving on. Now the conversation is moving on to games that aren't cross-gen and getting the IPs out there, getting the games that we want to see and getting these new IPs and more importantly, getting these new design games like, for example, that these developers says they can do now that they have access to SSD. And that's on both platforms because they made that statement for both Xbox and PlayStation. So it's now time to see um, these great concepts and ideas come to fruition. That's what it's about. The power's done. It doesn't matter. A, a person buying a PlayStation console, Xbox console in 2023, the power is in the consideration. we already seen it. It is what it is. It's about the games and it's about the potential of the games that are coming. That's it. The ship has sailed with this whole power narrative. I think the only time it might come out, if it doesn't even come out again, is if... These two companies decide to release mid-gen refreshes, PS5 Pro, Xbox version, whatever, which I don't think is going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen at all. So that's it, you know. And 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 all that because of because of the end game is where now all this stuff, this realization and this bad heartache, it just came crashing down. The reality is it should have been an actual logical discussion. It should have never been something to chase clout. Should have never been topics to lie to. We even had, I forgot his name. Um, he's named after, his account was named after um, the Lord of the Rings guy. Schmeagol, Gollum. Yeah, Gollum something. The dude lied about Resident Evil 5 saying that the PlayStation 5 can't really handle the game at 1080p. That's how ridiculous this whole thing got. The PlayStation 5 Five is having issues with Resident Evil Resident Evil 7 I'm sorry not 5 7 Resident Evil 7 or 8 no Resident Evil 8 I think Resident Evil Resident Evil 8 yeah having issues with Resident Evil 8 at 1080p 
That's how ridiculous. And then he come and admit it saying, well, he made it up because he felt there was too much negativity for Xbox. What do you mean you made it up because you felt there's too much negativity for Xbox? As if you were responsible to balance the scale? Like, what? This, this, this is what we went through, you know? You know, as, as content creators and as gamers who are just seeking for information, watching YouTube, listening to podcasts. This is the nonsense people spent hours upon hours, week after week, for a whole year or even, you know, a year and a half. And this is what people had to listen to. And many people cheered it on by the thousands, co-signing it. And now here we are in 2023. And some people will not, don't want to lose face. So they're going to keep on with the BS. They're going to keep on with the lie. They're not going to admit it and be like, you know what? I was wrong. Let's just move on. It is what it is. They're not going to do that. They're going to they're, they're, they're gonna try to save face by pushing more lies, which ultimately results in more ignorant gamers that don't know nothing. I mean, that's just how it is. You know, got to stop pushing the lies. Listen, pushing lies on Twitter does not result in the brand succeeding. It just means you're fooling other people. And the funny part is you're not fooling the audience that it is intended to. If you're a PlayStation dude and you're pushing lies on PlayStation, you're not fooling the rest of the gamers because they could clearly see your lies. You're just fooling the rest of the PlayStation guys. And same thing with Xbox. All that bullshit about Xbox, you're not fooling PlayStation dudes and Nintendo PC dudes. No one believes you. You're only fooling your own community because those are the only people that's going to give you the chance to actually listen to you and say, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. They're the only ones that's even going to try to do that. Rather everybody's be like, hey, just get out of here. I'm not listening to you. So you're not fooling. You're only fooling yourselves. You're not fooling everybody else. We see the results. We see the NPD cells. We see the cells in Europe. The president of Microsoft said himself that Xbox is getting stomped out 70 to 30. Market domination around the world, globally, 70-30, 80-20 in Europe, 96-4 in Japan. Literally, the future of Xbox hinges on this Call of Duty game because, and, and I can see, I can clearly see why, is because there is probably not going to be a better IP that can truly push Game Pass. Call of Duty comes out every year. You get a new Call of Duty every year, and it is a big hit every year. Game Pass needs this goddamn game. Game Pass absolutely needs Of course, Sony is being a fool. They're acting a fool in this nonsense. You know, playing wounded animal, protecting that, right? So we know Sony's acting a fool, but for Game Pass, it is not pretend. Game Pass absolutely needs call of duty there is no other better game other than maybe if you acquire ea and you're able to put madden and fifa every year they need a game they could put every year on game pass and it's super big right now call of duty is it you know ultimately i'm gonna end off on this the lies caught up to the community and now the community is looking stupid it's looking silly some people are tired of it some people are now reflecting, saying to themselves, they should have never got involved in the first place because it's just absolutely bonkers. But anyway, you let me know what you think, especially if you're an Xbox guy. Do you feel fooled? Do you feel like and realize, you know what? It was the biggest Ponzi scheme in gaming and how many gamers got suckered. You let me know in the comments section. This is your boy, Porter Rock System. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Subscribe so I could get so you can get notifications on my podcast every Tuesday or anytime I upload content. I hope you stick around and enjoy uh, what I offer. And let's make 2023 big. All right, this is your boy. Only friends, YouTube streets. I'm out of here. Peace.